what is a docker image and how does it differ from a docker container this is one of the biggest confusions among people who are new to docker if you watch this video in full hopefully you'll get a solid answer to that and much much more Here's what we will discuss today. First, we will understand what Docker images are and how they work under the hood. Then, we will discover how images relate to containers. And finally, we will learn and appreciate how Docker maximizes storage efficiency and performance by being lazy. If you haven't watched the first part of Docker Made Easy series, I highly recommend you do so before continuing with this one. Find the link in the description below. Just to help us clarify the main concepts, let us start by recalling that Docker is a platform that allows us to package our applications into deployable executables called containers that contains all the necessary operating system libraries and dependencies that the application needs. A Docker image is a blueprint or template for creating a Docker container. Docker containers are processes that enable OS level virtualization and virtualization gives us the ability to create virtual environments from a single physical machine or computer. You already know this in much more detail if you have gone through the first video. But how do images actually work? In simple terms, a Docker image specifies a sequence of steps required to perform a particular task. Now, that task could be to run a web server or to send an email, or to run a cron job, or whatever you can make a computer to. An image can be built manually by running the commands step by step against the Docker daemon. But in most cases, it is built using a Docker file, where the commands to run are specified in code and thus can be automated. Let us look at a very basic example. Suppose we have a directory with two files, an executable shell script named myapp.sh and a docker file. The shell script just simply prints out the date time every two seconds. Nothing fancy here. And here's the content for the docker file. The four lines correspond to four different steps required to make our own image using this docker file. The steps in the docker file are as follows. Step 1. Use the alpine image as the parent of our image. Did you know alpine is a Linux distribution like Ubuntu or Fedora, but it is super lightweight. Its docker image is just 5 to 6 megabytes. We will discuss more about parents in a moment. Step 2. Use apk, the Alpine Linux package manager, to update the indices from all configured package repositories. This is similar to apt-get update on Debian systems. Step 3. Copy the files from the current directory of the host, in this case our computer, to the slash app folder inside the container. Step 4. Run the my app shell script when the container is started. The important point to note here is, images do not execute the CMP or entry point instructions mentioned on docker files. That step will be executed only when a container is created from the image. 
Now, if we open up a terminal on this directory and run this build command, the Docker CLI will send a request to the Docker daemon to build an image tagged as my app. The ending dot specifies that the current directory is to be used as the path for the build context, which simply means to use the files in the current directory for building the image. If the build command has completed successfully, Docker would have executed each line in Docker file as we had discussed. As a result, we would get a final image with the tag my app specified by the first argument we provided in the build command. Awesome, now we have our own image. The cool thing is, once we have built the image for the first time, any consecutive builds to that image will be much faster. But why does that happen? The answer is because Docker caches each step, thus forming a stack of layers. Each step in building an image forms a layer. The layer itself is an image. Therefore, a Docker image can be thought of as stacking one or more images on top of one another, where each Docker image is just a difference to its previous one. By div, it means what has changed since the last layer, similar to how our git diff works. So, instead of running all the commands every time you rebuild an image, Docker detects which was the first step that has changed, and then it only performs the steps after that. So for example, if your image has 10 layers and you perform a change on the second last one, like modifying or adding a file, then Docker only has to rebuild the last two layers since the previous ones can be reused. Now you might wonder, if each image is derived from the previous ones, then where does the initial image come from? That's a great question. The answer is, it comes from that image's parent. The from keyword on a Docker file defines the parent image to be used. There can be multiple parents of an image, but for most cases, a single parent is good enough. Okay, now you might wonder again, What's the parent of that parent image? And what's the parent of the parent of the parent? Before we get lost in this parentception, let's formalize this question. Where does the hierarchy of images start from? The answer is, it starts from scratch. And I mean, you literally write from scratch. When you say from scratch on your Docker file, your resulting image will not have any parents and it's termed to be a base image. You are provided with a totally empty image which you have to build from the ground up. It is meant for advanced users and use cases of course, especially where the most minimal image is desired. So just knowing this option exists is good enough for us now. So how do containers interact with this stack of images? When we want to run a container, we specify the image to use. Let's say we want to run a container named app1 using our my app image. The hyphen D option tells Docker to run the container in the background so that you have access to your terminal. When the container is started successfully, you can follow the logs generated by this container by running the following command. 
and surely the echo statements are printed every two seconds. How the container interacts with the layer of images can be represented like this. All images are immutable ones built, that is, they are read-only. Using this property of immutability, Docker maximizes storage efficiency and performance in two primary ways, by using the copy-on-write strategy and by sharing image layers. Since images are immutable, Docker creates a thin read-write layer on top of the image stack for the container. If the container only performs read operations, then it can read files it needs directly from the image, instead of having to copy them to its own container layer. However, if the container wants to write or modify any files, those files are copied from the image layers underneath to the thin container layer and then the write operations are performed. This is known as the copy on write strategy or what I like to call lazy copy. In addition to copy on write, containers can also share images. All containers started from an image can share the image layers they have in common each having its own read-write layer instead of having a new image for each single container. This is how Docker maximizes storage efficiency and performance by using the copy-on-write strategy which minimizes IO operations, achieving super-fast load times for containers, and by sharing layers which promotes smaller image sizes thus reducing the storage footprint. If you, like me, think that's an engineering masterpiece, then you, my friend, deserve a crisp high five. Alright, today we learned quite a bit about how Docker images work, how they relate to containers, and how storage is utilized to gain stunning efficiency and performance. If you want an easier to follow along example, check out the Docker blog number 2, which is a more in-depth version of this video. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Was this video helpful to you in any ways, or was it difficult to understand? What did you find the most interesting? The containerization technology absolutely intrigues me and I can't wait to learn and share more about it with you. Hope to see you around. Till then, be bold and keep learning. But most importantly, take care.